Let's talk internet speed. I think right now with the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, a lot of us are noticing that the speeds aren't uh, what they were uh, before. Uh, well, some Australian uh, researchers have uh, actually uh, set the record for data transmission, 44 terabytes. On the line, we've got our good friend, Peter Vogel. He's a physics teacher and tech writer. Thanks for joining us, uh, Peter. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, John. So I, I came across this story. Uh, the Australians uh, seem to want to have faster uh, internet. Uh, they've actually done uh, a test where they were able to get, I believe it was, uh, sorry, 44 terabits uh, per second, not terabytes. Uh, what does this mean? Like, I think most people are going to be thinking, what, what the heck is a terabit? Like, how can we relate this to people? Well, we, we already have trouble getting a gigabit, uh, shall we say, uh, here in the Vancouver area, uh, although we have uh, providers for it. Some of us will uh, know that we don't always get what uh, is claimed. So when we hear 44 terabits uh, per second, uh, we say, wow, hmm, is that the next big thing? Am I going to pay $100 for that next week? No, I don't think so. We're not going to see this uh, research anytime soon. But it made for a good story, especially when it was uh, hooked with a thousand movies downloadable per second. And everyone's suddenly thinking, well, I can set up a Netflix from home. And, no kidding. Uh, <laughs> I'm the next competitor here. But uh, it, it, as with all fundamental research, it's something that's going to see the light of day in uh, probably in corporate backbones, in the, uh, the backbone infrastructure of these telecoms. We know that um, global demand is growing 25% a year, roughly. And this year, of course, is an exception with perhaps, perhaps double uh, that. Um, and so there's always a demand for something more. But when we hear this story, we say, well, this is revolutionary. Certainly 44 terabits is, is in a league that we can't relate to as a home user. Um, are we going to see this deployed soon? Well, as I said, five years is the, the time frame given by these uh, researchers, and uh, they're quite happy to uh, see this actually work in, in a commercial test. They ran it in Melbourne, so in downtown Melbourne, Australia. They took a 75-kilometer loop of fiber and they were able to ram the equivalent of 150 laser streams down that fiber. And it's that that they coalesced into one massive 44 terabit stream. The advantage of their uh, bit of work is that it cuts down on the number of lasers that are needed. So they have this uh, crystal, a soliton crystal it's called, uh, that can uh, take multiple laser streams from a single laser split it into multiple 150 200 feeds all individually controllable and that becomes uh, a, a huge saving uh, in uh, equipment from what i understand uh, they were able to do this over existing optical fiber lines that that's obviously important that's crucial. It, in other words, it was a real-world test over existing fiber. And typically, today with existing fiber, you know, you run uh, 100 or so streams maybe uh, with multiple colors, multiple frequencies, and so forth. This is a much more structured way of doing that and uh, ultimately a much cheaper way of doing it. Let's just talk about the speeds just, uh, you know, for the listeners. Uh, right now, I think a lot of us are, uh, for our internet speeds, are in the megabits category. I believe I get uh, 300 megabits. John, what do you get? Uh, just over 600. Oh, of course, right? <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and so, 1,000 megabits would be one gigabit. And from my understanding, 1,000 gigabits would be one terabit. Correct, Peter? Yeah. 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 And so, uh, yes, yes, I'm in the 600, but typically might see four or 500. Uh, uh, and so even if I were to double that tomorrow to a gigabit, would I really notice a difference? No, it's also limited by the latency of the other end, the, 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 the site you're trying to access. The, the real story here is that this will allow uh, interconnectivity between the various providers to, to improve that backbone, as it were. I think that's the important piece that a lot of people don't think about because while I get over 600 megabits download, my upload is only about 20 megabits. And it's, it, I mean, I'm on Shaw and that's kind of how they're set up and TELUS is a little bit more synchronous as far as whatever you pay for, you get it on up and down. Um, but that whole backbone thing, when I, I remember when I jumped from, 
I think I had 150 and I went to 600 when Shaw doubled and, and then further doubled it again. Um, I didn't really notice any difference on most of my day-to-day activities online. It's really just when you're doing something very specific, like downloading a video file, for example. So true. Yes, so true. And, 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 and people jump at the, the next offering from the providers and uh, expect to see uh, double whatever it is they're getting. And of course, that isn't true. It doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I had 150 for the longest time and then yeah, doubled it to 300. And you're right, John, I didn't really notice a difference uh, other than if I was downloading a, a video file. And I mean, you know, we have five members in my family here in the house. They're online gaming, Netflixing. Um, so uh, you're right. It just depends on what's happening on, on the other end. If the other end can't shoot stuff out that fast, it doesn't matter how fast of a download pipe uh, you've you basically uh, have. Are the Australians leading this field? Are they the ones always pushing it or is it uh, kind of I, a race? I don't think so. I think, um, I think that this is a worldwide race. Um, this is certainly open research. The, these guys share this. And as with many things in, um, in uh, primary research physics, it's a, it's a shared effort. Uh, it was published in Nature Communication. So it's a very prominent uh, publication that picked it up. So it's, it's worth uh, the, the news coverage that it uh, received, even if it was slightly misunderstood. I've been talking with Peter Vogel. He is a physics teacher and tech writer and a frequent contributor to the show. Thanks for joining us, Peter. Thank you both. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Just hit that notification button to be notified about our next show.